had to be on your back the whole game too, you punk. Yeah, but you gon' feel it, Cooley. I'm telling you, you gon' feel it. I told you, keep that camera running. You might miss him. We're gonna be in your face and letting you know the real talk. This is NFL, which stands for not for long. And welcome to the Not For Long Pro Football Show. Noah Groninger, Clint Schweitzer, we are back. The Raiders are also back. They came back from a huge deficit against the Buffalo Bills. The Chiefs get a miraculous two weeks in a row, miraculous win over the Atlanta Falcons. Eric Berry, the leader and heartbeat of this team, does it twice, a pick six and a pick two for the win. The first pick two in NFL history, as I understand it, the Kansas City Chiefs continuing to ride this unprecedented wave of momentum, and it's time to start believing in this team. And I wrote an article about it last week after the Broncos game, and you cannot have two more dramatic, unbelievable oh comebacks God. for the Kansas City Chiefs, which sets up one of the biggest you know, regular season games yeah, in a stadium in a long time. I mean, you got this Thursday night game. Finally, Thursday night football has some meaning. They may get rid of it in the future, but this game is going to be huge. And I think this is not only the biggest game of the year for the Chiefs, but the biggest regular season of the game in the NFL because of the implications it has on the AFC playoffs, Noah. It does. The Raiders are in first right now. They are the number one seed. They have a tiebreaker over the Patriots since they got that Buffalo Bills win. And these Kansas City Chiefs and Oakland Raiders, this, is, this game is for all the marbles in the AFC West, it looks like, coming down to it. The Broncos are kind of struggling. Trevor Simeon's injured. Paxton Lynch is in there. He's really struggling, not coming along as a first-round pick for them. So this could be it between the Raiders and Chiefs for the AFC West and for a two-seed for the Chiefs, maybe a one-seed. Maybe they can the Patriots can get up some losses. But, I mean, you look at this game, and you've got the Oakland Raiders coming in, a high-powered offense, but it's going to be cold. It's going to be frigid out there. Possibly Bring your nine. long underwear, Noah. I've I got it on right now. I'm getting prepared. Oh I'm getting goodness. my body warmed up. It could be nine degrees out there at, near the end of this game. So what are you seeing in this Chiefs-Raiders matchup? Coming The cold weather, they have to travel. They played at 3 o'clock. It's a short week for them. What do you think? Short week for both teams and with all the marbles on the line. We haven't seen this Raiders team playing for anything like this in so long. They have not had a winning record since 2002, since the last time they were in the Super Bowl. And I can't remember a Chiefs-Raiders game having this many playoff implications this oh late God. in the season yeah. since probably the early 90s when the Chiefs actually beat the Raiders in the playoffs. They beat them two weeks in a row in 91. <laughs> uh, and we're going to get into that with uh, our guest this week, George Atkinson, coming up. Former Raider, our good friend. I Mr. Know, Raider himself. Hey, for the first time in a long time, I actually feel kind of kind of dirty going behind enemy lines here because we've been <laughs> such so friendly with George over the years. But these games just haven't mattered much until now. Exactly. The Chiefs uh, have won six out of seven uh, under Andy Reid so far. And... The, the Chiefs have won eight straight division games. I think that bodes well here. The Chiefs do have this game at home. The Raiders have played really well um, on the road. Both teams, though, healthy in this game for the Chiefs. That means a lot because the one loss they've had since beating the Raiders has been to the Bucs, and that was a Chiefs team that was very just decimated by injuries. You had yeah. D. Ford out, Marcus Peters out. Justin Houston uh, playing Patty Cake. He wasn't ready to come back. Yeah. These guys are all back and all healthy, and I think maybe that's going to bode well for this Chiefs team. Right now I'm leaning towards the Chiefs in this game because of the way they take care of the football. I like the way Der David Carr is playing. He is, I'm sorry, Derek Carr. Sorry, hold on. I like the way Derek Carr is playing. How can you not? He's playing at an MVP caliber right now. The yeah. Raiders are the fifth overall offense in the NFL, but the Chiefs just took care of the number one offense in the NFL, the yeah. Atlanta Falcons, and impressive fashion, the way that they get the timely turnovers, Marcus Peters, Eric Berry. I like the Chiefs in this game, and I like for you and I to go home with frozen behinds and uh, for them to unthaw hopefully on Friday. Well, you mentioned the niceties between us and George over yes. the years, but like you mentioned, it hasn't kind of been a match between us. So the Chiefs have just dominated the matchup, and so I'm wondering how this uh, interview this we're going to take it easy on George. George. Though. He's our I friend, mean, and we did take him out to dinner last time he was here. He I'm, did, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see how, how is he going to treat us. He's never offered to uh, give us a forearm shivered under the helmet like he Pete might Lentz this won. time. I'm kind of getting a little nervous. <laughs> about this interview we're going to ask some tough questions we're probably get, both going to pick the chiefs and he's going to fire back saying the raiders are back just win baby well let's go ahead and bring on our guest at this time he is our friend but going into this week it is raider week he is our sworn enemy george atkinson former raiders legend george welcome to the show man it has been a while how's everything going out there in oakland man big game this thursday for sure listen this is uh chance where the audience get a chance to see the best of the AFC, I think. Uh, Kansas City beat the Raiders, the only one, I think, in the division at that time to have beaten the Raiders. And uh, Kansas City, I'm pretty sure, try to get even. But 
I think what's important to both teams is the fact that uh, whoever wins this will have control, I think, of the AFC West. Well, it's been a while since this has mattered. George, we've had you on our show now for four years, and we've always talked about what, what, how can we make this rivalry mean something again. The last time these two teams met with uh, playoff implications this late in the season, as far as I looked, to me it was 1991 when the teams inevitably met in the playoffs after playing each other the last week of the regular season. But this is so big. You've got Thursday night football. All the lights are on. To me, this is the biggest game, not only for these two teams, but in the NFL regular season the entire year. I mean, this is just that big. Well, not not so much as a year. This is the biggest game. You said ninety one. The last time they played for a game of this importance, and I agree with you because this can determine who controls the AFC West, and whoever controls the AFC West, I think, has a good shot at winning the conference. So, in my eyes, that I see it between the Raiders and the, uh, and Kansas City. And the Raiders definitely have to come out and play the best football that they have played this year because of the adversity that they will face, which is the weather, and Kansas City being on the road. And, uh, you know, what's, what's at stake here? Now, George, are the Raiders really ready for this? This isn't the sunshine of California. <laughs> They're coming here. They're, they've played at 3 o'clock. It's a short week. They're coming into the frigid cold. They're playing a team that's been here. They know how to win. Are the Raiders really ready for this? Uh, ready? It's been a long time coming. Come on. I mean, how can you not be ready? <laughs> and you have played as well as they have played. I mean, the way they have four games out in the fourth quarter and the second half during the season, definitely they're ready. I, I don't think that's the issue. I think the big issue is being able to adjust to the adverse circumstances that the Raiders will feel coming in, like you said, into a cold environment, a hostile environment, and an environment where uh, the fans are giving energy to Kansas City because of just the mere fact that the Kansas City Chiefs are one of two teams that beat the Raiders, the Falcons. Is the other, and the only team that have beaten the Raiders in their conference and division is Kansas City. Well, you mentioned the cold last year, George. You came into Kansas City. We were able to go out, have a good dinner before the game. All was well, all was friendly. But you say this year it's going to be 14 degrees on on uh, Thursday night. You say you're not leaving your hotel room, George. I guess I guess we won't be able to see you this time because it's just it's just too cold. We 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 don't handle that well, you know. <laughs> Listen, let's get together again for a meal. And uh, let's kick it around in Kansas City with 14-degree temperatures, and let's see what happens. I think the Raiders have a good chance because uh, I think uh, there are some injuries Kansas City have that could influence the outcome of this game, I think, to a certain degree. But I think the Raiders have a chance because they have a momentum swing that has been in their favor for quite some time during the season. Well, how are the Raiders, you mentioned this weather, how are they going to deal with this? Because these wide receivers, they've had drops all season long for as talented and as great as they are, Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, even Seth Roberts, as great as they've been this season, it's going to be like catching a rock out there or a brick. I mean, this thing is going to be cold. It's going to be hard. Are these Raiders receivers ready to catch this football? Let me say this coming from a former player and a player who has played in Kansas City, in adverse conditions, it doesn't even matter at this point because here's what matters. The best team is going to play the best football regardless because both teams have to play in the same increment division, or increment divisions, I should say. So uh, the Raiders have to, they do, and I'm pretty sure uh, Jack Del Rio We'll have them ready to play whatever the conditions are because here's what's at stake, guys. It's an opportunity to win the division, get the playoffs, get your bye week, and get prepared to win two games that will take you to the Super Bowl. And I think this game is the, is the most important game of the Raiders' season. And when you look at their season, 
uh, they have stepped up to the challenge when they had to. What do you make of this Chiefs team? We've seen the last two weeks, specifically, the Chiefs win on just unbelievable scenarios. You had uh, an overtime field goal that hits the upright, bounces in against Denver, and then Eric Berry with a pick two to uh, win the game against Atlanta. The Chiefs just see, sort of have this kind of wave of momentum going, but all very close games. And the Raiders had a lot of, a lot of that early on as well, going winning a game in New Orleans, you know, by a two point conversion in some of these games. I mean, this this this, this division is so crazy. It's good to see it so good. But what do you see from this Chiefs team and why they're able to? Well, they've won 19 of their last 21 regular season games and eight straight in the division. Why has this Chiefs team been able to be so successful? Here's what has happened with the Raiders and why they're successful. They're able to pull games out in the second half. The fo- football games are won in the second half. That's where you get a chance to make adjustments. That's where you get a chance to get, uh, reboost your energy. That's where you get a chance to see what teams are doing that you can take advantage of. And the Raiders have been quite successful at making adjustments at halftime. Look at the number of games down the stretch that they have won in the second half. Well, what that does, that prepares you to play hard in the second half, regardless of the weather, regardless of whether you're in Kansas City. you got to beat your opponent. And the Raiders have developed a good standard for winning in the second half for them. Now, you got to keep in mind for the Raiders. And Kansas City, I think, like you said, they have been winning on hooks and crooks. And hooks and crooks are not going to win this game. They have to play solid, solidified football in order to be the team who's buying and want to win and hungry. Got a lot of young players who want to win this division. You mentioned that a lot of young players that want to win this division, but do they know what it takes? Is there anything to the Chiefs team having veterans and a group that has been together, or the core has been together for a long time? They've been around the block, so you can say they've been to the playoffs. They've won big games. They know what it takes. Is there anything to that at all? Not much. When it comes head to head, it's, uh, listen, who has the momentum right now? Like, like you said, I didn't say it, you said it. Kansas City has been winning by hooks and crooks. <laughs> that's not my words. That's not my words. Those are your words. Hey, George, and don't turn that around. That's not going to work. Let me say this. Let me say this, guys. I love you guys, and we have done radio for a lot of years together. But let me say this. This is the first time that I have an opportunity. That I have an opportunity to come into your town and feel very confident about beating you because you guys are right now playing on strands. We're playing on confidence, we're playing on talent, and we're playing on the ability to win. And you know what happens when a team catches fire and can win in the second half. Hey, whatever happens in the first half gives us an opportunity to be productive in the second half. And like I said, that hook and crook thing that you said, now, not me. Well, <laughs> hey, we, that's not going to work this Sunday. <laughs> well, the, the, the Raiders have done some of that themselves, George. A two-point conversion in New Orleans. I mean, uh, the Texans, two touchdowns. I mean, going down 24-9 to nine to the Bills. George, this is all up in the air. And I love it because this is all the AFC hatred. AFC West hatred, George. This is the first time, guys, since we've been doing Raiders. I know. We have a meaningful game. I love that- it can determine who goes where and how far they go in the playoffs. Now, we're not going to, the Raiders are not going to let this opportunity just slip by. Come on. Well, neither come on. You, you beat us at home, but you're not going to beat us at your home. Oh, come on now, George. It's been so friendly here for four <laughs> years between us, and now the Raiders are back, and now I feel afraid to meet you and see you again. I'm going to get a forearm shiver to the face. <laughs> you come, let me say this, and I, uh, I hope that didn't get through. <laughs> let me say this. <laughs> George, we let love you, but we got this. the weather on our side. We saw how you handled the Kansas City cold last year. We, we were used to this. Come on in, George. We'll do it. We'll do You're it on actually, Wednesday night. That's buddy. a different team. You don't have – this is a different team, and you know it. And you know it. You know, listen, you, you have followed this series just like I have. And you know, as well as I do, that first game, throw it out the window. Throw it out the window. 
Here we come. KC, here we come. <laughs> and I love it, George. This means so much because we talked about it for years that we need to make this back, and it, it has happened. It reminds me a lot of back in uh, the late 60s, early 70s when you guys – I mean, you know you, know, you know what happened. I mean, you still got it in your blood. The Chiefs went there in 1970 in the playoffs and won a game that you said there was no way the Chiefs should have won that to go to the Super Bowl. This goes back, doesn't it, George? It's so far. Exactly. And you know what? Not only does it go back, it provides the league an opportunity – to present two teams in the AFC Conference and in the AFC Division, Western Division, who are primo teams and who can represent this conference well. But not only that, these two teams have had, have met for years. I mean, I can I can account for a number of them, and um, you guys can account for. A but is this not good for football? Yes. Oh, it's amazing. Think about it. It's Think lot, about it. Is this not good for football? It is, especially no Denver involved. Denver's down there. They're exactly. not buying for this. There it is. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Two teams who have fought many times for the right to represent the AFC Conference. And now, hey, we're right back at that same state. I, I, I think, and on Thursday night, think about that, guys. On no, I... Thursday night football, we get a chance to the two, I think, the one, no, the two and the four team, fourth team in the conference get a chance to square off to represent the AFC because I think if either team comes out this as winners, I actually think if Kansas City wins, which I don't think that's going to happen, <laughs> they have a chance, <laughs> I love they this. have a chance of beating the Broncos. Uh, the uh, New England Patriots, if it comes to a conference match, and I think the Raiders, I think the AFC West right now is the strongest division in the conference. Oh, it has to be, yeah. I, I just hope we can keep this thing friendly and Clint and I can avoid a forearm shiver from you, George. I don't think we can survive it. <laughs> I'm done with this. I'm not going to give no forearm shiver. Oh, that is great news. <laughs> the last forearm shiver I gave against Kansas City was the last. But <laughs> Thank God. <'cause> it's, <laughs> can you, it's a little too but cold. I today. love competition. love competition like you guys do. And as I just said, the conference, the AFC, is much better off when the AFC West has teams like quality team like Kansas City and the Raiders playing for the right to represent. Plus, here's what's going to happen. Even how, however it comes out, those two teams will be in the playoffs, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, George, I tell you what, uh, this has just been so great. Thanks so much for coming on and talking with us. Let oh, us know. man, you know I love talking to you we and your you. fans because, hey, you, you guys, you know, Kansas City is original. Uh, uh, you look at that AFC West division. I mean, what, what what's better Nothing to better. represent the AFC conference other than some team came, that's coming out of the AFC West? Yeah, and, this uh, is great, George. I think the Raiders will represent the AFC West very well. Well, there you go. It's uh, <laughs> he, the man's called a shot, George. We love you to death. You know, you're you're our buddy. Hey, let us know when you get to Kansas City on Wednesday. If you have some time, we'd love to to grab a, grab dinner with you. Let us know, man. We can make it happen. Let's do it. Let's we do it. get yes. it tomorrow. So there you go. I either call you or you call me, and let's have dinner. We'll call. We'll call you, and you bring your long underwear, and we'll get together, man. <laughs> <laughs> you bring your crying towel because that's what it's gonna be. Look, George, we love you, man. We'll get a hold of you, and we'll see you, and we'll uh, have a great game on Thursday night, man. We'll talk soon, okay? I'll bring you a box of tissues, You George. got it, man. <laughs> thanks God a lot. Speed be good. You betcha. You Safe too. travels. Huge thanks to George Atkinson for coming on. A legend we still love of him. the Raider. Yeah, we do. We will always love George no matter what. No matter how this game goes, even if we lose and he forearm shivers us on the way out, we'll still love George. But I got to give this game to the Kansas City Chiefs. This team is a veteran team. They're a winning team. They've been to the playoffs. They know what it takes. The Raiders have no idea what it takes. They're a young football team. The Chiefs, they know that this could be one of their last chances with the veterans like an Eric Berry, a Derek Johnson, a Tom Baha Lee, even a Justin Houston yeah. who's been in the playoffs, Alex Smith, Andy Reid. This group, they know what it takes. They know how important this game is. The Raiders have no idea what they're doing. 
They're going to come out here. It's going to be too cold. They're going to be dropping balls. <laughs> that ball was hard, too hard. I couldn't catch it. They have problems catching in 70-degree weather in Oakland. They're not going to catch a rock out there in Arrowhead Stadium with a loud crowd just pouring down volume upon them. They won't be able to hear. They won't know what they're doing. They won't know when to come off the ball. It's going to be crazy, but I expect a big Chiefs victory this Thursday night. Chiefs fans live in this moment because it gets no better. Arrowhead Stadium in a primetime setting. We're going to be there, and I cannot wait for this. I don't know how I'm going to get through the rest of the week, man. This is so exciting. because <laughs> well, I think this day is- off Friday from work exactly. will be we had to do it. This is the premier matchup in the NFL in the regular season this season, and this has so many implications on the AFC playoffs. We don't know what New England's going to do down the stretch without Rob Gronkowski. Things are, are seemingly wide open, but the right, but the the Patriots, they kind of have the edge on, on these teams. Right now, they only have the two losses, as do the Raiders, but a Chiefs win puts the Chiefs right back in there for the number one seed spot, as at least in the conversation. Definitely going to look be looking at uh, winning this AFC West. Not 100%, of course. you still got three games to play. you got to go do it. Exactly. And this team's known to, to, to lose games under Andy Reid, but I think that's the way that they're opening the, this playbook up, uh, the way that the, they're getting healthy. I just like the way the Chiefs are playing right now. Uh, Andy Reid comes in here and they've just won uh, 19 out of the last 21 regular season games that says a lot eight straight division wins for the chiefs i like the kansas city chiefs and i also just hope we survive the cold and <laughs> it's just it's just amazing i live for this because no let's face it we haven't had a lot of these situations no. in the last 10 years where you go out there and you just know what's on the line in these big cities. Yeah, the Chiefs Especially have, in a regular season. I and mean, they've we, made the we playoffs. We were in the playoffs last year. We went to Houston. Yeah. We went to Boston, Gillette Stadium. We knew what was on the line. Unfortunately, we didn't come out on top in Gillette. And not many teams do in the playoffs or any time with Tom Brady under center. But this regular season, I mean, I cannot remember the last just huge, meaningful game importance. So much riding on this game in a regular season. I can't remember yeah. the last time. I just can't. Well, you know what we said here on the Not For Long Pro Football Show that we would make the NFL great again, and we sure have because we've seen you the, through this season, and we are here to make it great again, and we've done it. The drama is back. What was lacking before the elections, whatever you were watching before, <laughs> forget it, folks. The NFL is back. The ratings are back. People are engaged. Ooh. As we go through four weeks to go, I mean, there's just so many implications. The winner of this game, Super Bowl contender, Chiefs Raiders. They have to be, especially with that Gronk injury. I mean, if the Chiefs can win this game, beating the Raiders twice, I mean, they've got their number. Even if we do see them in the playoffs, I mean, hopefully we can get the two seed after this. We do have the Titans and Broncos at home, and then at the Chargers, we still got to take care of business. Just because we beat the Raiders doesn't mean we've got the AFC West sewn up, not by any means not necessary. Uh, Denver's but- still lingering. Denver is definitely still lingering. If Trevor Simeon can come back, that defense, they know they're a championship defense still. They, they're right in this thing. And, but with the New England Patriots, that Gronk injury, I still have them in the driver's seat because Tom Brady, I don't care who's out there, Edelman, Amendola, Martellus Bennett, he'll find a way to get it done. But it, it, there's a possibility it opens the door for the Chiefs more so than ever. With Gronk out, that is a huge factor for them. There's no way you can cover him. Safety, linebacker, double team, triple team. He is a monster. And if you do have to double him, it opens up everything else. Schematically, they're so good that it just oh opens God. up yeah. Hogan. It's going to open up Amendola. It's yeah. going to open up Edelman. I mean, that's just what they do. Yeah. And so now if it's one-on-one with everyone across the board, you just open up all sorts of possibilities. And with Tom Bahali coming on, Houston, Ford, Peters, Eric Berry playing out of his mind right now, just willing this team to victories. Yeah. And he's talking about embracing every moment coming back from cancer. And he's not looking at a yes. big picture. He's in the moment, embracing every moment. Every play he makes means so much to him. And just he's on fire for Kansas City. And he's willing and leading this team to these victories. And that what's made us slow to warm up to this, knowing that a lot of the times this uh, Andy Reid coach teams are just sort of slow through the regular season. Exactly. They just sort of mill through the season. Last year, uh, when we start two and five, it just looked like all hope was lost. But this team has a way to find itself when you have the veteran leadership even a veteran quarterback like Alex Smith who's not going to you know put up fantasy points for you that's for Philip Rivers and Matt Ryan and those guys are, are are losers I'm sorry they're losers yeah and the Chiefs are going to have a chance at this. I think it's exciting. I'm ready to go. You Thursday can, night, we're ready to go, buddy. I can go I, right now. I'm ready to go right now. I, I'm, I'm ready to get out of this cushy studio. Stop going it's to 74 Dave. degree weather. I'm ready to get outside and do this thing, man. But, Nine degrees. Hey, we're taking this right to the Super Bowl here on the Not For Long Pro Football Show. And we're going to go ahead and bring on our video correspondent. Don't forget about yes. him because it's time for my favorite segment. It's Sean Smack Unfiltered. Sean, big week in the NFL. Oh, Things man. are heating up. What do you got for us this week, my brother? All right, guys, thanks. Uh, For me, uh, there's a few things that are in my craw, but one in particular is teams that quit or decide not to play much or play hard at the end of a football season uh, when they're out of the playoffs. And while I don't ever get into a guy's mind before the game and wonder if he's 
you know, if his head's in it, because none of us as analysts or people that are watching a game pre-game can say, oh, I knew his head wasn't in it before the game. We, we don't know that. Anybody that thinks they're, they can get in a player's mind before the game or knows what they're thinking or if they're going to give effort or if they're mentally ready or they're full of shit if they, if they think otherwise. But I can tell during a game and post-game. And how you can tell is how hard a person plays or a team plays. Now, I, I would never, ever accuse people of being cowards in that when it comes to on-the-field toughness. But I watched the Jets team against the Indianapolis Colts, and I'm sure I've seen a, a few other teams, or should I say players. It's not fair to, to put a whole team into that. But I've seen players that all of a sudden at the end of a game decide they don't want to play hard. See, I don't coach effort. And any coach that coaches effort's dumb, and he's a dumbass. I don't teach effort and coach effort. That's on the player. Okay, the coach's job is to get them ready to play, motivate them as much as you can, although when you're making that kind of money as a professional athlete, you shouldn't need motivation. But because your team's out of it, you decide in the last quarter. They, they, the Jets embarrassed and humiliated themselves against the Colts last night. I'm talking about humiliated. Some guys won't rush the passer at the end. It's almost like, hey, but I'll sprint and get my paycheck in, in a week and a half or on Friday. So I am so tired of seeing guys that – that need a kick in the ass or decide that their season's over so they got their golf clubs in their trunk and that their engines are already started trying to get through the last month of the season. Now, that's not everybody, but when you see guys that aren't playing hard until the whistle blows, that aren't hustling away from the ball, that aren't doing those things, now that is coward, okay? That is coward not to play through. And whether it's the Jets or somewhere else or Jacksonville or anybody, that when I'm a new coach, if one of those teams replace their coaches or anywhere else, you know the film that I'm studying as a new coach and when I'm trying to evaluate my personnel is the last four games of the season when my team's been getting their ass kicked all year. See, because it's easy to play and evaluate when your team's really good, like a Dallas Cowboy or Patriot team. But it's hard to evaluate when your team's playing like Jacksonville or the Jets or the Browns. I want to know if you've quit on me as a new coach at the end of the season. That's what I want to know. When everything's done and we're finished and you're thinking about vacation, have you quit on me? but you're still going to go collect that paycheck. And I don't know about pregame quitting, but I see some guys that don't give full effort all the time, but they're sure as hell going to go pick up their paycheck, and that's not on the coach. Coaches don't teach effort or coach effort, as I said, nor would I, but I am watching. You go ahead and watch closely some of the film when guys decide they've had enough and their season's over and there's still four weeks left to go. Those are the guys that put on the bitch move that I don't want on my team next year. That's how hard they need to be evaluated, and that's when they need to be evaluated harder than ever. We'll see you next week. Nobody's quitting on this show until the season's over. And then we'll relax and get ready for next year. I'll talk to you guys next week. As always, amazing from Sean. I love you, Sean. He's always a man for me. I'm sorry. He is. There's Joe Montana, Tom Brady, and Sean Salisbury. Okay, that's weird because mine are Tom Brady, Gavin Rosdale from Bush, and Sean Salisbury. <laughs> Not Joe Montana? Come on. Okay, Sean, no. he's he's a different kind of a man crush. Maybe he didn't have the looks of the other two. What is That's going true. on? What am I talking about? I don't do I don't, I don't do know. celebrity crushes like that well <laughs> because it's like all those girls seem so unattainable to me. So I just maybe stick to the man crushes. I don't. Yeah, this exactly. has gone I in a dark you. place. I'm sorry. Well, we got some big <laughs> AFC West matchups other than the Chiefs Raiders. So I'll help you get off that topic. It's getting a little Thank uncomfortable you. for me up here. But Ravens Patriots Monday Night Football. This is a huge step if the Chiefs can beat the Raiders for the Chiefs getting to that number one seed. If the Ravens can come up with a win and beat the Patriots, the Steelers play the Bills. We need the Bills to come up with that because I don't want to see the Steelers in the playoffs. No matter what you say, I want to see the Ravens. What's that you say? Who's the number one defense in the NFL? Right now, it's the Baltimore Ravens, which exactly. is what they've always done. But it's been quiet. You don't have Ray Lewis. You don't have Ed Reed. You don't have Tony Siragusa. Jimmy Smith, their corner, came back from them. So, big goose. Uh, Jimmy Smith came back for them at corner. It's really solidified that secondary and made them that number one defense. Leading the division right now. Yep. Maybe they can pull off that upset. Not out of the question. And whoever is that five seed, they will be playing the winner of this weekend's game, Texans, Colts. Yeah, big matchup. Colts got a big win. They destroyed the Jets, as they should. Um, the Jets have football. quit on this season. But the They're Colts done. are still in this. Colts, Titans, and Texans. There's three teams still alive in this thing. To the Marcus Mariota playing really well for the Titans. I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I haven't Run really liked what the Murray Colts have done all year or the direction they're heading, but they're still there. And the Texans, uh, losers of, of a few straight games now. I don't. I, I think they're done. I think the Colts get this game. This it's division? at home. 
I think the Colts go ahead and take it. Well, the Titans have the Broncos, and then our Chiefs coming up uh, next week. So uh, I think the Titans are done here. They're going to lose these next two. So I think it's the Colts winning this game against the Texans, and that's it. Ball game. Colts are your number four seed, and the five seed will be traveling to Indianapolis. Hopefully not the Chiefs. We don't fare well against those. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I mean, I guess this year I might take them, but I tell you, I don't know. I don't you got we got the helmets up here. We got teams that have been impressive right up here on top of the football. It's barely standing. I don't know how. The Detroit Lions. They oh are the, they are your leaders in the NFC North, but the but hey, images that may be closer than they appear, <laughs> the green and yellow might be a little bit closer in the rear view than anyone would have thought a couple weeks ago. Detroit, can they hold on to this thing and 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 dethrone the uh, dethrone the Green Bay Packers? I think so. The Vikings are free falling. The Bears are just dumpster fire of a mess, kind of almost like the Cleveland Browns. They're they're searching for a quarterback. The Packers are rising. That offense is kind of gaining their footing. They're still not perfect. They're not just pinpoint on par as they usually are. They're kind of struggling, but they are getting it done. They're finding ways. They're mix matching, but. That defense, it's coming alive. They're not a sieve like they've been. and I, I. But they're two games back. I think the Lions, they're just playing great football for the first time. They had a lead in the fourth quarter. They kept the lead. They held Drew Brees without a touchdown at home for the first time, and I don't know how long. And they've been play, playing amazing football on defense. They're turning the ball over. They don't have a lot of just household names for you, but they're getting it done. So Terrell Austin in that defense, Jim Bob Cooter, everyone's favorite yes. offensive coordinator, is getting it done. <laughs> Uh, so I love what the Lions are doing. I think they win that division. How are they going to do in the playoffs? That's another question, but I like what they're doing, and they win the NFC North. Of course, in the NFC East, the Dallas Cowboys, everyone's darlings, everyone's back on the bandwagon. Everybody wants a Raiders-Cowboys Super Bowl because those two fan bases maybe have the most bandwagon fans of any fan base in the NFL. They lead, they're going to win the NFC through 11-1. The Cowboys, what they've done isn't is very impressive. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, they're both up for – I'm sorry, am, am I boring you? Oh, what? Anytime time we talk NFC East, you fall asleep on me. Is that I have to. I, the, I'm with the you. The NFL, every single primetime uh, game, except for this Thursday night How about one, the South? Can NFC we just East. skip that and go oh, to the South? Yes, because the guess South. what? I'll say this about the South. You saw the Atlanta Falcons lose a game at home that a lot of people thought they should have won. The Bucks. what have they won? Four straight games. And guess what? Every time I see the Bucks, this is weird. <laughs> I, I've grown to like their uniforms after adamantly <laughs> hating them. I, I, I adamantly... Who? I adamantly hated these uniforms. When I they, still hate them. It's, it's growing on me. They did the all whites at San it's Diego. Like, what is that? A goldish, silver? I don't it even shines. know. It shines. It's like, got the sparkly. It does have a shine, but then it's like this It's like one of those boats, or those red, fishing boats. They have that like have the, orange. There's too many colors. I hate it. It's, they, hey, it, it may look like something that needs to be at Disney's Orlando theme studios, but I do. I like what the Bucks are doing. I think they have a chance in this division. They have a tougher schedule down the stretch. Got to play the Seahawks coming up. Can the, the Falcons Atlanta Falcons have, hold on the dirty birds they can they have two easy games coming up they're winning the next two games okay. i don't know if the bucks can but the bucks will get that six seed they will be in the playoffs so uh if the falcons maybe get that three seed i don't know the they, the bucks could be visiting them and tampa bay is not a team you want to see in the playoffs right now they are on fire mike evans is uncoverable uh, Jameis Winston is finding himself. He's playing great yeah. football. He's not turning the ball over, which was a has been a huge problem up until this stretch. So I like what the Bucks are doing, and look out for them in the playoffs. Earl Thomas is out for the season uh, for the Seahawks, so maybe the Bucks can challenge the Seahawks, the Falcons, and maybe even the Cowboys. Well, I tell you what, we've got to get out to Arrowhead Stadium. We got to begin our coverage of Chiefs Raiders. So we're going to go ahead and bid you farewell. For an early week you, edition of the Not For Long Show. Pro That's Football French, show. don't you know? I know no French. I don't ever want to speak a foreign language. I honest, did. I knew ever. French. I took one and a half years of French until I couldn't conjugate a verb, and my French teacher took the back of my hair and shoved it in my book. That seriously happened? It did. She had tenure, though, so she couldn't get fired. I don't think so. that, that would fly in today's academic <laughs> world of academia. But Well, this was the early 2000s. On. A lot went down that I can't even get into due to legal reasons. This is the Not For Long Pro Football Show. GreatAmericanSportsNetwork.com. Do never never hesitate to tweet us at GASN Sports. Yes, Twitter. I love All it. of it. Get us on. Get the interaction going. Let us know what you think, and we will catch you next time. The Raiders aren't ready for this. They're young idiots.